Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. It's a complete guide to the University of Nottingham 2021. So it's basically for all prospective students, students that are starting in September or students who are already at the University of Nottingham just want to learn little things that you haven't found out yet. Just a complete rundown of literally everything you need to know. There is so much that I'm going to be covering in this video from accommodation to transport in Nottingham to sport to societies, literally a complete comprehensive guide. This video is is not in conjunction with the university. It's all my own opinions. I am just doing it because I absolutely love the university. And if you know anything about me, I love having a good chat about the University of Nottingham. I'm so happy here. So without further ado, I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more Uni of Nottingham content. I do general university content as well, but obviously Uni of Notts has my heart. I love making videos about it. So I really hope that you enjoyed. First of all, we're going to talk about where Nottingham is because despite being a geography student, I'd never been to Nottingham before. I had no idea where it is, but basically it's in the Midlands, specifically the East Midlands. So it is so easily accessible by the UK. I think that is one of the biggest selling points of Nottingham is because it's transport links to actually get to the university itself. So you have the East Midlands, I think it's called like East Midlands Airport, which is obviously great for international students who are traveling here. Or, you know, if you fancy a little holiday midterm, I don't know, I don't know anyone who's done that, obviously COVID, but you know, a girl can dream, a girl would love a weekend in Paris or wherever they fly to. It is greatly accessible by train. Nottingham has quite a big train station and they have trains straight to St Pancras and obviously St Pancras connects you to pretty much anywhere in the south. There are so many connections up north and there are direct links to the M1. That's how I usually get to Nottingham traveling by the M1. Second, I just want to clarify that there is the Nottingham Trent University, not to be confused with the Uni of Nottingham. It's not a separate campus to the University of Nottingham. It's literally a separate university. I go to uni of, I know a lot of people that go to Trent and they have a great time. Trent is more in the city, like it's literally based in the city, whereas the uni of Nottingham is based in a place called Beeston. I'm going to talk a little bit about the surroundings of the campus soon. There's a little bit of rivalry there. I mean, a lot of it just isn't serious. When you go to club night, they might be like, who's from Trent? Or like, who's from UOL? That sort of thing. There's actually several Uni of Nottingham campuses. I mean, the main one and the one that I'm based on and the one that a lot of courses are is the uni park campus so that's where like geography history english math classic subjects psychology like they're all based on the university park campus but then you also have the medic campus and like all the medical stuff and that is literally like right next to uni park i think it might be in dunkirk uh, where the qmc is which is the nottingham hospital you also have jubilee campus which is literally a 15 minute walk from the uni park campus that has computer science on it business accountancy a couple of different subjects there's a couple of different halls there it's a little bit smaller it's a lot more modern um, and then you also have Sutton Bonington which is near a Loughborough actually you'd have to get on a bus to get there but there is a free hopper bus between the uni park campus between Jubilee and between Sutton Bonington so you know you can get around and Sutton Bonington is where of the vet med students study so you know it's very green very countryside it has its own student union like it's its own mini campus over there you also have King's Meadow campus, where if you're doing a little bit of work for the university, you might be there. I think they have a lot of offices and things. And then what makes Nottingham quite unique to other places is that it actually has two campuses worldwide. So it has one in Malaysia and one in China, which is super exciting. And there's lots of study abroad opportunities there. And because of COVID, no one in my year group is able to do a study abroad there this year, um, which is a shame for the people who applied for that. But you know, next year, hopefully. So after talking about the campuses, you may be wondering about the different accommodation options at Nottingham. And I would say Nottingham sort of varies from a lot of other UK institutions in the fact that on the main uni park campus, literally all of the halls on that main campus are catered, um, which kind of gives off like Oxbridge, Durham sort of energy there. Maybe they're trying to, you know, be like the elite. I think it is just because Nottingham is a relatively old uni. And um, there isn't any gendered halls, they're all mixed. One of the halls each year, um, a couple of blocks in that is a quiet zone. So if you want, you can no noise after nine, that sort of thing. But the other halls are all relatively lively, but in a good way. You know, you're gonna have all students there who are 
nine out of 10 times, they're gonna be first years. You do have a couple of second years, but it's mainly freshers. And because we were catered, we also had a big JCR that a lot of people spent time in, which was really nice, especially during freshers, to socialize with more people. Um, we had pantries so we could make microwave food and we had a kettle in our room and a fridge in our room. So that was nice as well. So you did have the option to store and make, you know, like little snacks and things. Also there were formals, which were so much fun. And we had a Christmas formal and a summer formal. We would have had more, but obviously COVID. And if I was gonna do my first year again, I'd 100% go for cater tools. It just worked for me. It's not for everyone, but I also can't cook. So from a lazy perspective, I absolutely loved being in cater tools. But if catered tools doesn't seem like your sort of thing, don't worry, they have you covered. So you have self-catered accommodation, literally a five minute walk away um, in Broadgate Park, which is a little further into Beeston, really not far at all. And I think over the space for like over 2000 students there, everyone I know that has gone self-catered, it has been right for them and they've really liked it. So it's literally just a personal preference. And whatever, you know, you're choosing accommodation wise, you know, there's option for ensuite or non-ensuite, have shared bathroom between like one and two of you or you can have a bathroom between five of you like, there's loads of different options you can have a double bed you can have a single bed you can share you know a room where you study with someone or you can have a desk in your own room or you can have a plus size room which is quite big and um, obviously nottingham can be quite expensive in the sense of catered accommodation is quite expensive but because we're in the midlands i feel like it's probably a mid-range sort of price for accommodation. Obviously not paying as much as someone at a London university or at Bristol, but then equally, it's obviously not as cheap as Leeds or Newcastle. Catering is gonna take you back about 2000 pounds throughout the whole year. There's also some other accommodations that you can have. So there's St. Peter's Court, there's Dagfa. I'd really like Dagfa. I kind of class that as part of Broadgate because it's right next to it. There's Albion House, there's NG2. Then in trend with other universities in second and third year, people tend to move out of student halls and move into a flat or a house with some other people. So one of the most popular student areas is Lenton, which is between the University Park campus, Jubilee campus, and the city. Also, people live in Beeston as well, which is actually where like the University Park campus is sort of based. So, you know, you might only have a five or 10 minute walk to your lectures. And then other people live in Dunkirk, which is nearer like the medical side, like nearer the QMC. It's down to personal preference. Student houses are quite a lot of money for what they are, considering that a lot of them are like three bed terraced houses that are turned into seven beds. The student landlords, they're, re they're really making their Money. So I'd say that in second year, you're probably looking at between £95 and £120 for a house with bills included. It completely depends where you're living, what sort of house you're in. That's just sort of a rough estimate for you. Someone can disagree with me in the comments if they think it's different, but from personal experience, that's what I'd say. Looking at budgeting for second year, I would say that's the sort of price range you're looking at. So the actual facilities at the University of Nottingham are obviously quite similar to other universities. So you have your libraries, you have the Hallwood Library, which is meant to be like the library of the arts. So law, humanities, your essay based subjects. And then you also have the George Green Library. That is where like your maths, your science, engineering, all of them sort of books are found. Equally, any student can study at any of the libraries. Um, also, all of the books are available online on this platform called New Search. So if you want to, you don't really even have to trek to the library. And then there's also some study spaces. So the study spaces dotted around, you'll have some study spaces in each hall, whichever hall you're in, there's gonna be a study room or two. And then there's also a purpose-built like study building where they also have lecture theatres and that's called the Monica Partridge building. If you ever watch my Instagram stories or you watch my YouTube vlogs, you'll know how much I love Monica. It's literally just four floors, I think, of study spaces. So you have rooms you can go into, you have just tables and chairs, you can study with friends, you can study on your own, there's sofas, it's just really modern. And um, that's what I love about it. Hallwood is a little bit dated, but apparently they're renovating Hallwood. So it'll be really interesting to see what that looks like. And one of the most important things I think is the student union. These vary so much by uni. So if you are looking at universities, definitely get a vibe for what their student union is like. Um, in Nottingham, it's based in the Portland building, which is a fat building on campus. One of the main things there is Mooch, the student union, Bar, which I love. I have such good memories of there. They have a nice outdoor seating area, a nice indoor one. It's very pub 
vibes. Some student unions, like I know at Loughborough and at Trent, they have actual clubs in the in the student union, but Nottingham just has a pub sort of vibe, which I really like to be honest because they do really cheap drinks. They do Thirsty Thursdays where you get two form cocktails and they also are open during the day. And there's also a really lovely cafe there, which is actually like run by the student union and it's called Portland Cafe. Literally, in my last week, I'm pretty sure I went there nearly every day. I loved it there. They do such good food, a lot of vegan options as well, if that's your thing. Now, I actually did one of my online exams sat in there. And then they also have a spa, which is the on-campus supermarket. If you haven't spent your meal £25 by the end of the week, you can go to spa and stock up on biscuits or mixer or whatever you'd like to spend it on. Um, it is quite expensive, spas are quite expensive, but if you can't be bothered to trek somewhere else, like it is just handy to have a supermarket on campus. And then they have quite a lot of food options. There's a Starbucks, there's a Love Joe's, which is chicken. There's a pizza place called, I think, 365. Um, there's a Nigerian chicken place. And then of course we can't not talk about the gym. I really, before uni, was not a gym gal. I went a couple of times before lockdown and then I forced myself into buying a gym membership. At Nottingham, I would say it is relatively expensive. It's over 200 pounds, I think it's about 220. Whereas at other universities, they do give them out for free if you're in the accommodation owned by that university, which is quite interesting. If you know you're gonna go to the gym three times a week, that at least, then it's definitely worth it. I'd say anything less than that, you're probably just not gonna get your money's worth. A lovely gym, very modern, um, not that intimidating. Like obviously, once you get past the initial fear of rugby boys, um, literally no one cares, no one looks at you at the gym. Um, the range of classes are amazing. I'm awful at group exercise, but I loved it anyway. And I felt like it was really good just to sort of clear my head and sport in general. Obviously, it's such a big university and it actually, I think, won sports university of the year either this year or last year or the year before if you play sport at home or you want to try a new sport there's so many different sports societies that you can join sport is quite a big thing at nottingham i look at me i'm not really sporty you know if i did want to get involved there are loads of opportunities they have these things called engage sessions where if you have your gym membership i'm pretty sure they're free and you can literally just try out any sport like they're all beginners there's also the Trent building, which is this iconic building on campus. They do like church there, they do English there, they do some other subjects there. It's also really pretty in photos and it's sort of the iconic building. I mean, most people will probably actually never go into it, but it is really nice. There's also the Downs, which I think are such a selling point of university, whereas I didn't even know about it before I went to Nottingham, but it's literally just this like big expanse of grass and there's trees all around it. The first chance of sun, we'd just be out there. Now we're going to talk about Beeston, which is an area when the University Park campus is based. As soon as you get outside of the University Park campus, you meet a co-op, which is great for just last minute bits. If you walked a little bit up, you'd eventually find a Tesco's, a Sainsbury's, there's a Lidl nearby, there's um, a Weatherspoons, which is called The Last Post. There's some other independent pubs, there's some great cafes. Like Beeston is just quite quaint. It's, you know, not the city centre, but if you just need to get some food, sometimes just a nice alternative to going into town because it's only like a 10 minute walk away. But obviously the city is where most people go out either during the day to go shopping or for something to eat or the nighttime, the nightlife. Nottingham it does have really good nightlife. A lot of people who come to Nottingham are not only there for the course, they are also there to have a good time. But equally, if you're not into the pubs, the clubs, which there are an abundance of, there's so many chain ones, such as like Prism or Spoons, like Pop World, there's also so many independent ones like Rock City and Bodega I believe is independent. I'll do an entire separate video all about places to like go out out in Nottingham once I've explored more of them because obviously things have only just reopened. But then equally if you're not into nightlife there is so much to do during the day. There's galleries, there's a museum, there's a castle and um, there's a lot of history in Nottingham. There's just a lot of things to do even if drinking isn't your thing. But then Nottingham City isn't so big that it's so overwhelming, like London or something. We are going to talk about societies. So again, this is quite a hard one to talk about with COVID because a lot of them have been online, which has made me and my friends kind of reluctant to join them. There's a lot of ones to do with culture or religion. So you can sort of feel at home at university. So you can meet like-minded people who you share, like a shared history with or a same culture or language or religion, that sort of thing. So they do them sort of societies so well. 
It's actually over 200 societies, like there's so many. Obviously you have your typical sport ones as well that I've mentioned. Um, each subject actually has a society. So the Geography Society, Jog Sock, um, it seems really fun. I'm actually on the committee next year. Um, I really love their socials. They actually did a mix of in-person and online socials. Societies are a good way to sort of just broaden your social circle because you can sort of very easily get stuck in the rut of, okay, I've got my flatmates or people that I've met in my block. And then I've got some mates from my course and then that's it. But if you join a society, you can just sort of meet people from different years and just have different experiences and different things to talk about. It can be kind of intimidating. There's like 200 societies, what do I join? You can join them and sort of leave. You're not tied to them if you're not enjoying it. If you are thinking of joining any societies, let me know what they are. I hope that that gave you an insight into the University of Nottingham. And if you have any questions about Nottingham, there you can leave them in the comments below. Obviously I'm only a first year, so I don't know absolutely everything there is to know, but I am learning. If you have any more questions, i'll answer them in the comments i really hope you enjoyed please give it a thumbs up share with your friends who are also thinking about nottingham and i'll see you all soon in next week's video